Good afternoon, guys. Um, the first thing I wanted to say that I wanted to start off with, uh, it's just flashed into my mind a few times today. Uh, and, and this may seem like a small thing, but for me it was kind of a profound realization or, or revelation. I realized, you know, this should be blatantly and, and painfully obvious, but I realized that I am finally being able to do what I want to do with my life, which is dedicate it uh, 100% to pursuing the path of magic, to learning as much as I possibly can, practicing as much as I possibly can, and being able to pass it on to other people who will pick it up, take up the practice, and, and start doing the same thing. Uh, and you guys are, are what makes that possible. You know, you are what allows me to live my life dedicated to magic. And, you know, not only are you allowing me to do it, but you're participating in it uh, by, by caring, by wanting to do this. It just hit me, you know, if somebody said, what would you want to do, if you could do anything in the world that you want to do with your life, what would you do? And I realized, I'm doing it. And you guys made that possible, so... Thank you very much for that, for this. Uh, and what I wanted to kind of do today is, um, oh, another thing I wanted to say, and then I'll tell you why I wanted to do it this way today. Uh, I'm not ignoring your comments on the videos. For some reason, I didn't even realize this was happening until recently. Like, I've tried to respond to comments on there pretty much the entire time we've been doing Patreon. And... I didn't realize my comments would never never sent to you guys. Turns out that you can't respond to comments on a phone. Uh, it, it has to be on a computer, on a laptop, and I had no idea. Um, but I just couldn't see my own comments back, so I thought maybe I just can't see them. I didn't realize they weren't even going out. So it's not that I've been ignoring you guys, it's that for some reason I can't comment on a cell phone. But the reason I'm talking about that is because I want to, we, you know, we were recently doing these videos where I would go through and, and pick out questions that you guys asked and then try to answer those questions to the, the best of my ability. And I want to do that again. Um, I picked a few out for today, but also right now, just in this video or in the comments under this video, uh, I want you to ask questions that you have because that's the whole reason we're doing this is me trying to pass on things that I know and that I've learned so that you don't have to flounder around the way that I did a lot of times. Uh, somebody, the first thing I wanted to touch on was the first question somebody asked was, uh, do I think psychedelics it was kind of a two-part question. The first part was, do I believe that psychedelics have a history that's entangled with magic in some way? And yes, I absolutely do believe that. Uh, to What I would point to, and if you watch this guy's stuff, he will absolutely blow your mind. There's an old man named Jordan Maxwell who did these videos on an app on the TV. You know, like the Netflix app? There's another one called Gaia, G-A-I-A. And this old man, uh, Jordan Maxwell, did these, like a series of videos uh, called The S Secret Life of Signs and Symbols, something like that I believe it's called. Uh, but these videos will absolutely blow you away. I love these things. I've sat through them a couple of times now. Uh, but he talks about, he, got, well, he goes really deeply into this stuff and how psychedelics even played a huge part in the Bible. You know, for example, um, you know, the story about Moses going through the desert or, or leading the people through the desert. Uh, he was supposed to be taking them to the promised land. And at one point, uh, it says that they have nothing to eat and God gives them manna, manna to eat. Well, the word manna in Hebrew means, what is it? That means they didn't even know what it was. They had no idea what the hell they were eating. But it describes it as being small and flaky and... Uh, that it comes up in the first thing in the morning and then as the sun, as we go towards noon and the sun gets higher in the sky, it uh, kills it so they can't save any until the next day. I believe that what they're describing are mushrooms. Uh, and combine that with other things. For example, 
it talks about how they are uh, led by a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of smoke in the day. They're describing a volcano. You know, when you're hearing all the stuff about the voice of God and all the people being filled with fear and all this sort of thing, that was the volcano uh, probably getting ready to erupt. But essentially what you're talking about is these people who are taking mushrooms and marching around this mountain, circumambulating, as they call it in magic. Uh, circumambulation is a technique. It literally means, like ambulation means to move. Circa means in a circle so what the word circumambulate means to walk around in a circle and that's one of the things we do to generate energy to charge talismans with to consume you know as, as spiritual sustenance to send to people for healing any of that sort of stuff so I always try to describe to people that the Bible uh, is a book written by magicians honestly and magicians have never, until very recently, written for lay people. That's why it's in code. Magicians write for other magicians. When you're talking about that really high level of magic, like these biblical prophets had achieved, they're basically writing to other prophets throughout time. Uh, lay people will have no ability to understand the code that this is written in. That's why people now... You know, they, they worship it as religions instead of being able to understand it. That's why you have people that'll say they don't believe in evolution, but that believe in a talking snake that somehow or another made us do something. Um, this is the same thing in Crowley's work. Uh, you know, like in, in this, the state of Arkansas tried to murder me over, you know, they were quoting from things like the Book of the Law, Crowley's Book of the Law. Uh, which is written in the same kind of code that the Bible is written in. They're reading from a book and, and trying to use this book to murder me, to put me to death when they could not even understand what they were reading. You know, they were reading it and understanding it on the same level as people who believe in the talking snake. Um, they don't have the key to be able to decipher all of this iconography and imagery. I believe that the psychedelics that the Hebrews were taking when they were going around the mountain, that it does, you know, even in ancient Egypt, in ancient Egypt, people used to say that like blue lotus, that's the reason we started working with our blue lotus tinctures, that it facilitates contact between you and these outside intelligences that we're wanting to, to make contact with, whatever you're calling them, whether it's angels or jinn or uh, gods. Um, it, it helps facilitate contact between your intelligence and theirs. There were, you know, that's, that's what the whole uh, celebration of, of Dionysius uh, and, and Bacchus, that's what that was all about, the whole drunken orgy thing. Uh, those existed all the way up in, you know, all the way back in, uh, as far back as human civilization goes. Uh, those are traditions that understood the impact that those states could have on our consciousness. However, what I also want to say is what I think it does for most people who do not have any kind of spiritual tradition or grounding. You know, they're not in, they're not working in shamanism. They're not working in ceremonial magic. They're not working in what whatever the hell it is that will allow them allow them to integrate this stuff. Uh, I think what happens for those people, it's kind of like they were allowed onto an elevator and went all the way up to the hundredth floor and the doors open and they get to see that there's so much more. They've never seen anything on the hundredth floor before. So they get to see that there is so much behind the scenes of reality that it's mind blowing. And then those doors close and the elevator comes back down here and they're back down here. The problem with that is they cannot access that hundredth floor without the help of some sort of outside substance. And that's one thing that we are seeking to transcend at all cost in magic is our enslavement upon uh, any other means. You know, when, when you're doing magic, you want to get to the point doing magic where you could be dropped off butt naked in the middle of the jungle, no tools, no anything, and automatically be able to start doing magic. And if you are so dependent on uh, 
you know, some sort of chemical help that you can't even perceive that level of reality. I mean, when you're doing magic, what you're doing is you're not just going up to that hundredth floor. You're getting off and exploring it and figuring out, well, I, what you're doing is getting a pass where you can go up and down at will whenever you want and do things up there that will affect things down here. Uh, okay, guys, um, this is running over 10 minutes. I hope you are all doing well. And again, thank you all so much. Uh, I will talk to you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.